Hello and welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Annetta Felix. The Kaduna State House of Assembly has replaced former Deputy Speaker John Kwaturu with Nuhu Shadalafia. Shadalafia, representing Kagako constituency, is the former House Committee Chairman on Information. The former Deputy Speaker last Friday resigned and defected from the All Progressives Congress to the opposition party, PDP. During the House plenary, the Speaker Aminu Shagali also declared the seat of the former Deputy President Kwaturu vacant and that of another member representing Kudan constituency, Junia Yakubu, who also defected to the PDP. The national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Adam Sushomale, has insisted that Bukola Saraki must resign as Senate president. Oshomale told reporters after meeting with APC lawmakers that his party remains the majority in the House and must retain the leadership of the Senate chambers. The former Edo State governor and the ruling party will be accepting anti-democratic values if it allowed Saraki to remain as the president of the Senate. The senior president is afraid of his uh, security of his office. In order to protect himself, he chose to adjoin the house after announcing those defections. Because his plan to turn his party into minority failed. And as we speak, today we have 56 senators. Five, six out of 109. And if you make allowance for the fact that one is in prison, you are eventually talking of 108. So even if you put all the other parties together, my own party, the All Progressive Congress, is the majority. And we are not going to accept minority rule. That is the truth. It does not matter how many columnists are hired to write, how many young boys and girls are recruited, what person posted 200 or what thousand messages in the social media. The truth cannot be defeated by the power of those who are privileged to write. It can only be defeated by superior truth. And when we hear people are approaching courts to say people should not be pitched and so on, it's laughable. The truth is democracy is such that majority must, I emphasize majority must in a democracy have their way, while minority must be allowed to have their say. But to insist on a minority rule is to turn the logic of democracy upside down. All of these issues we have discussed at the CACOS. And it is in line with the promise of the present National Working Committee that we are going to be holding regular CACOS meetings with people elected on the platform of our party so that we can share our views and reconcile our differences and forge common ground on issues of national interest. Meanwhile, Senator Shehu Sani, in his reaction, said the remaining party members have now agreed to work together for the progress of the party, especially ahead of the 2019 election. The last three and a half years has been turbulent and stormy for the party. And we are determined to chart a new phase. That is bringing all party members together and working for the success of the 2019 elections. The party is the majority in the National Assembly and there's a need for us to take advantage of our own majority. The party has decided to unite all its members, to dissolve all its differences and to work to the success of President Muhammad Buhari and also to work to the success of the new chairman and the new National Working Committee of the party. 
A member of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Rotimi Olo, has insisted that the mass defections in the APC will not affect the party's chances in the 2019 elections. Olo, who spoke to reporters in the southwestern state, said the performance of President Mohamed Buhari and Lagos State Governor Akimumi Ambodi will give the party better chances in the polls. It only shows that democracy is at play. And uh, for those who do not have the same ideology with APC, they came in to wrestle power and they know the party is too hot for them to obey. They have to go elsewhere. So uh, it's a welcome development. Uh, some were leaving the party, some are entering the party. But the most important thing is that a party that has ideology, that will be able to meet the needs and the aspirations of Nigeria. That is what we need today. Over the time, Nigerian nation has been raped. We must say the truth. Over the time, our money has been stolen. Over the time, a lot of Nigerians have no job to do because companies were leaving Nigeria in droves because we cannot continue to do what we've been doing in 16 years and expect better results. We expect our, our, the future of Nigerians to be guaranteed. We will do that. That is the article of faith. When you look at section 40, subsection 2B, of the 1999 Constitution as amended, it said the essence of governance is for the security and welfare of the masses. Who are the masses? The masses, the people we represent. We must fight for that. Ahead of the 2019 election, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has approved the registration of 23 new political parties. And this brings the total number of parties scheduled to contest in the elections to 91. Some of the new parties registered are Advanced Alliance Party, Advanced Nigeria Democratic Party, African Action Congress, Alliance for United Nigeria, Alliance of Social Democrats, Alliance National Party and Allied People's Movement, while others are Save Nigeria Congress, United Patriots, United People's Congress, We the People Nigeria, Yes Electorate Solidarity, Youth Party and Zenith Labour Party. The presidency has denied allegations trending on social media that President Mohamed Buhari has extended his London vacation. The senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, said the news was false. The president had on August 3rd this year commenced a 10-day working vacation in London. The vacation announcement was conveyed via a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Femi Adishina. Officers of the Federal Special Anti-Robbery Squad will now wear uniforms and name tags. This is according to new reforms approved by the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, and that after a directive by Acting President Yemi Oshimbajo. Idris, in a statement signed by police spokesman Jima Mashud, also approved the appointment of new commanders for SARS. He also ordered that SARS, previously under the Force Criminal Intelligence and Investigations Department, FCIID, will now operate under the Department of Operations, Force Headquarters Abuja. The police also added that to fully comply with the presidential directives, the federal anti-robbery squad will be intelligence-driven and will be restricted to the prevention and detention of armed robbery, kidnapping and the apprehension of offenders linked to stated offenses only. Meanwhile, in Lagos, a group of human rights campaigners has launched an organization concerned with the rights of citizens in Nigeria. The organization, Regional Watch for Human Rights in a Media Launch, hosted by Center for Constitutional Governance, said its aim is to monitor the human rights situation in the country. Nigerian security agencies have always been accused of frequent human rights abuse in the country. In recent times, Groups like Amnesty International have repeatedly criticized the Nigerian military of abusing human rights, though officials have often denied such accusations. To ensure the military's honesty, human rights campaigners have now launched a new organization in Lagos, southwest Nigeria. The organization, Regional Watch for Human Rights, RWHR in Nigeria, aims to ensure the protection of rights of all citizens in the country. Is human rights a Western culture or ideology? As it's been misconstrued 
in some quarters today. I said, no, and absolutely incorrect. All human society and global democracy conceive the idea of notion of justice, fairness, respect for human dignity, irrespective of or their blood, color, or race. Our mandate is one, to monitor the human rights situations in Nigeria and also the various conflict trends. I'm happy that uh, we have all agreed that regional work for human rights should be embraced by all of us and become part of this umbrella. Adebayo also touched on the issue of the 2019 general elections and asked the federal government to ensure a level playing field. I want to appeal to the Nigerian government to allow the Nigerian people to exercise their right to vote. And it should be done in a free and fair environment. And it should be a playing field for the people to exercise their right to vote. The organization has promised to join hands with other stakeholders to voice out for the voiceless people. The United States Embassy in Abuja has temporarily suspended visa services and consular functions in the federal capital territory. No reason was given for the decision. The embassy in a statement however noted that consular functions in U.S. consulates in Lagos are not affected and will continue. The statement also noted that scheduled visa and ACS applicants for Abuja will be contacted for rescheduling. A civic group has sued the National Youth Service Corps, NYSC, over the exemption certificate being used by the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adeoshu. Adeoshu is facing allegation of forging the exemption certificate and she is yet to accept or deny the claims. The Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SEREP, had earlier made a Freedom of Information request to the NYC seeking details of the certificate paraded by Adeoshu. The civic group has now sued the NYC when the letter refused to honor the FOI. You're welcome back. So we'll go over now and check in with Esther Vese for news in business. Hello, Esther. Hi, Annette. So I hear it's good news for Nigeria's economy regarding our inflation figures. Please tell me more about that. Yeah, actually, the National Bureau of Statistics has released the Customer Price Index, which measures inflation, with the index dropping by 0.09% from 11.23% in June to 11.14% in July. The Bureau in the report said this is the 18th consecutive decline in headline index. Now, the report says the consumer price index with measures inflation increased by 11.14% year-on-year in July 2018. Meanwhile, the Federal Executive Council has approved 15.73 billion naira for the road project linking several roads in Enugu State. The Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashala, disclosed this while briefing State House correspondents at the end of the FEC meeting, which was presided over by the acting president, Yemi Oshimbajo, at the presidential villa in Abuja. The minister explained that the project, which was initially awarded at the cost of 10.3 billion naira in 2012, was later reviewed upwards to serve six different communities. Because of uh, lack of uh, appropriate budgeting and funding, all of these projects could not be completed. There were also uh, failures in the implementation as we inherited it. There was also the need to provide for uh, uh, erosion control measures and drains. So that has led to a revision of the uh, existing contract awarded in 2012 from 10.3 billion to uh, 15.734 billion. So it's that revision to enable the contracts to be completed that was presented and approved 
in council today. In the power sector, electricity workers in the country have called on the dis for the dismissal of Usman Mohammed, the managing director of the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN. They made a call in a protest in Abuja, saying they will ground the country's entire power structure if their demands are not met. Umar Abubakar, the General Secretary, Senior Staff Association of Electricity and Allied Companies, said Mohammed flouted administrative procedures, which he des described as unfavorable to their welfare. Now, the workers also accused Mohammed of single-handedly conducting examination for staff due for promotion without consulting other management staff. In the banking sector, the Central Bank of Nigeria has injected $210 million into the interbank foreign exchange market. The CBN in a statement also assured that it was extending efforts to boost liquidity and alleviate dollar shortages. Now, according to the statement, $100 million was earmarked for the wholesale market, $55 million for small and medium enterprises, and $55 million for customers requiring forex for business or personal travel allowances, tuition, and medical fees, among other. Now let's shift the focus to today's stock market. You're welcome back. Now, closing with yet another bearish run, the equities market ended the day's trading with a 0.6% decline in the all share index at 35,069.34 basis point. The market capitalization closed at 12.803 trillion naira. Now, responsible for today's decline was sell offs on the shares of Nestle Nigeria, resulting to a 3.85% drop in its share price. That's 60 naira from 1,560 naira, which was recorded in its previous session. As you can see here, it closed at 1,500 naira. Julius Badger came in second with a 9.72% decline in share price to close at 6.5 naira. Zenith Bank followed with a 2.13% decline, closing at 23 naira, while Owando PLC came closed our top losers list with a 9% decline at 4.55 naira. Now, on the flip side, Total led the gainers chart with a rise of 2.70% closing at 190 naira. The First Bank of Nigeria holding came in second on the top traders list, having been on our top traders chart yesterday. It came in with a 3.14% rise and it closed by at 9.85 naira. Now, 40 All and Maybecker PLC also followed closing at 23.15 naira and 2.35 naira respectively. Being investors the light, the banking sector dominated the top traders chart with UBA maintaining its position on the chart. Yesterday, it also closed, taking the first place on the chart of our top traders. Now, Zenit Bank followed with First City Monument Bank. Here we have it with 338.63 million naira worth of shares traded and GT Bank with 785.449 million worth of shares traded. Now, the total value of shares came in at 2.903 billion naira from 4,044 deals over 209.540 million shares traded. And that's the stock market report. I am Esther Vese. It's back to you, Annette. And we'll be going on a very short break now to bring you news on the foreign scene and sports. Do stay with us. Corruption not in my country. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, madam. Uh, my name is Alera. I am not sick. I just need you to help put your stamp on this medical report. I, I want to tender it at my office as a sick leave. I'll pay 10,000 naira. Uh, Ma'am, that is impersonation. I'm not a doctor. Oga. Be like say this English no go pay. I go increase the money to twenty thousand naira. Eh, I beg. You know, eh? If I give you that twenty thousand, as you as you wide so, eh? You know, if it still help your condition more, so <laughs> you know, say so you spread well. Uh, as, as I spread like virus, I be. Are you talking? Oh, 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 if first you come to the hospital, talk to me, you give a fake medical report, make you go take cholesterol leave. Talk and say no, not corruption. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. Stop corruption now. 
You're welcome back. Well, on the foreign scene, Italy's grief for the 39 victims of a collapsed motorway bridge in Genoa has been mixed with anger that such a vital structure simply gave away. Rescuers are still searching for survivors underneath the Morandi Bridge, where almost 40 vehicles fell in Tuesday's collapse. The cause is yet to be disclosed, but there have been calls for the heads of the company operating the bridge to resign. Hundreds of firefighters walked overnight trying to relocate more survive, trying to locate more survivors, but an Italian Red Cross spokeswoman told reporters that only bodies had been found. The death toll from Greece's latest fire disaster has risen to 96. That's after one more victim died in the hospital. Reports say the latest casualty was a 68-year-old man. More than 20 people are still hospitalized after the July 23rd wildfire and several are in critical condition. Four senior officials, including the minister responsible for the police and the heads of the police and fire brigade, have been removed from their posts. The government had insisted that we with winds blowing at speeds of up to 120 kilometers an hour, there was little time to mount an effective evacuation. Heading over now to sports, Chelsea wing-back Victor Moses has announced his retirement from international football at the age of 27. Moses announced his retirement on his social media, where he said he is retiring to focus on his club football. He made 38 caps for Nigeria since his international debut in 2012 and was part of the Nigeria's team that won the 2015 African Cup of Nations. He made seven World Cup appearances for Nigeria across 12 tournaments in 2014 and 2018. Chelsea Football Club of England defender Kenneth Amero has sealed a loan move to La Liga club, Club Deportivo Leanes. The Super Eagles defender was unveiled on Tuesday as part of the club's team for the 2018-2019 La Liga Santada season, which commences on Monday, with an away game at the Atletico Bilbao. Omero, a versatile centre-back, also plays right-wing position and will provide multiple options for the Mariko Pelagono side. Confirming the player's switch, representative of his management, Koye Soemimo, head of sports temple management company, said they are delighted to see Kenneth join C.D. Leanis in the Liga. Manchester City midfielder Kelvin De Bruyne is facing a lengthy spell on the sidelines with a knee injury. De Bruyne sustained the injury during training on Wednesday and will be fully assessed in the coming days, but he's already on crutches and sources close to the player believe he could be out of action for anywhere between two and three months. It is believed he has injured the lateral ligament in his knee and a more accurate diagnosis is expected later this week. And that has been news now on TV360 Nigeria. Thank you for watching.